on this episode of Moments with Merv. We're going to continue with the types of friends you want to have, honestly. So, we're going to hop into the combatant. Oh my goodness! Listen, I hate this one. You hate this one. He, she, we hate this one. Shout out to Patrick. <laughs> These are the ones who like to argue. Often. I mean, consistently. Like, you wake up to an argument. And it's so annoying. Like, they, they don't really want anything. And it's just like, yo, what? Like, my sister, she she's this type. Like, you don't know how irritating it is when I get up at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. And I have a message on my iPhone or even my phone. And it's just, like, random. Like, for my sister. And it can say something like, OMG, men are so irritating. Like, you guys just disgust me. I don't understand why you guys so... And it's, I'm just looking at it like, what, bro? Like, what? Bro, you're bothering me. Like, you're bothering me. Like, that's so irritating. Because, like, now I have to defend myself because I'm a male. <laughs> and I don't even know what, where this even came from. But now I got to defend myself and my species of men because somebody wants to start an argument randomly. But you know what you do with some of these with the combatants? You just say, "Oh, okay," and they're like, "What are you doing?" Nothing. I I understand where you're coming from. <sighs> like they get an attitude because you can't argue with them, or because they don't have anything to argue back with you with. And honestly, that gives me so much pride. Like I do it constantly to my sister because like she'll randomly talk about something. Like you ever had like a great day? a great day you get a random message and it kind of just kills your mood like that's her sometimes and it's just like bro what do you want <laughs> it's like what 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 is your purpose of messaging me today with this topic like can you just hop straight to your point i don't want to see 30 messages i don't want to hear no voice recordings hop straight to your point and let's let's let me see what you're getting at, and then I'll see if we should date back to your explanations and if I should care. Because most of the times, guess what? I really don't. The only times I actually entertain her is if I had nothing to do, which is never. So the only time I entertain her usually is if I'm cooking. <laughs> because I can't multitask without something like productive. I got to work on the food, or the food going to have to be burnt and go into the trash. So we don't want that. So that's the only time she really gets an answer. Or if I'm doing something less... Uh, stimulating which is usually only when i'm like editing my podcast because i've been getting a little fluent with those so those are cool but it's so annoying but sometimes they serve a good purpose like they help you look at things from a different perspective and that's something that a lot of us need to do which is so funny because with her she messages me starting an argument and i open new lights to her and that's honestly the benefit of having you know that person because they make you look at things in the perspective from a different perspective, but you make them look at things from a different perspective, and that's literally how a lot of our conversations go. Because like she'll start talking about something I don't really care, but then if she still if I feel like she's getting more aggressive, then I'm like, all right, you want to talk? All right, let's get into it. And then I give her examples, I give her different explanations. She's one of the people who don't want to see things from a different light besides her own. And again, that's an issue amongst a lot of us. But <clears throat> what the combatant does is they make you dwell upon a topic further. Like, it's little things that you didn't probably think about, you didn't care about. Let's just say why the sun burns your skin and what has it done to your skin. Originally, you know, you'd be like, I don't really care. I don't go outside for real. Or you're like, I don't really care. I got sunscreen. But it's like, oh, well, maybe you're depriving yourself of something from the sun. Or maybe too much sun, now you're depriving your health. And it's like, I didn't really care about none of that. Why are you telling me this? But now you are in the argument, so now you have to defend. And sometimes you got to do a little further research because sometimes the arguments be so good, it make you want to think and look further into the topic. So this is good, though, because it gives you the opportunity to sometimes broaden the things that you know. Let's just say, again, like with the sun thing. Like, you might not know what the sun was doing to your skin. Like, everyone just about knows just because everyone talks about it. But you may not know, like, the full effects about it. So maybe you go and you look deeper into it. And then guess what? Somebody who's not your friend brings this topic, and now you have something to say about it. 
Because, like, maybe they were coming at you in a more aggressive manner, but now you could defend yourself because you're more knowledgeable about that situation. So the combatant is the one who, you know, again, you're so irritating. It's, you're bothering me. But they're the ones who make you look at things deeper. Like, you can't just have a basic conversation with them sometimes. Like, you really got to dive into real facts or you got to dive into real emotions, which are really the two biggest things that help an argument along with um it doesn't make sense which is logic but when you can dive into the emotional factor and make people you know feel a type of way or make them want to do something different or if everything is just too factual where it's like so much credibility that it's hard to argue that's good because in the world you're gonna need that like you're gonna have people who are really gonna start an argument with you about random stuff and again you were at peace but now you got somebody who's trying to you know spit a lot of facts at you and you're kind of like <sighs> all right you want to talk let's let's hop into it all right we're talking about why green beans are green all right let me tell you about what i know you know what i mean like it's just like little stuff that you might not think about but the combatant helps you look into certain topics a little further but then you kind of got this mental note where it's like okay i need to get a little more well-rounded in case somebody does you know Hop, hop into me and then a good thing about arguments is you learn how to win them where either you're going to have the right facts or you're going to appeal to the right emotions or you're going to be able to flip a topic and put it back on them to where now they have to play defensive and they if they wasn't ready for that then it's like woo, uh-huh now you get to win or the best way to win an argument is just say oh, okay and again they're gonna be like really what no, 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 I, I understand. I see, I see. And, and they're just going to be stuck there. So once they're stuck there, you just show them a mirror. And you like, you see that? That's ugly. That's you. And then you move on with your life. All right, next we have Einstein. Can you guess who that is? That's the smart one. And again, they can be super annoying. Because they're at times going to tell you about things that you don't care about. You weren't thinking about certain things. But they want to pull up new information just to make it sound good. And the thing is, the smart one sometimes are smart and sometimes they aren't. But this is something that's a perspective thing. Because I ask people too, like, is someone smart if they know a lot of stuff or if they know about stuff that you particularly care about or things that, you know, their, uh, their occupational career is in? So if somebody knows a lot about plants, right, and they're in a, their bio, bio major, okay, okay, it makes sense. But if someone else knows about a lot of things, maybe they know about plants and cars and homes and food and stuff, like, are, but they don't know as much as the bio person does in the specific category. So it's like, are they smart or are they just smart in their field? So that's something, you know, you got to look into, but it kind of, it kind of depends, right? But they're the ones who, oh my God, they really pull up information that you don't care about. Like, they'll say random things like, hey, did you know a plant has both male and female parts and they can reproduce by themselves? It's like, hey, okay, cool. I'm eating. Do you, do you care? No, you didn't care. Does that make sense to you? It makes some sense. I guess that's why, you know, plants can't flirt with one another. You know, they can't go on dates and stuff. So I guess they got to, you know, reproduce somehow. They got to grow again somehow so they die every year just about. But it's like, did you care? No. Now you got to think about a plant mating with itself while you're eating that's not pleasant they also might go hey do you know numbers one through 999 none of them have the letter a into it and you're like oh my gosh really who cares again like you know you can count to a thousand do you really need to care about the numbers one through 999 never had the letter a into it they're bringing them information that you particularly did not ask for and really isn't prevalent they also might go hey did you know most oranges are actually green and you're like wow really it sounds like a lime to me it's another citrus fruit but honestly did you guys know that oranges are mainly green i didn't even know that <coughs> it just came across my screen one day and i'm like oh really dwell into that i'm not gonna get into it because i again this is something i don't care about but it's just like you see it and you're like oh okay but again the smart ones, they're going to pull up new information. But every now and then, you're going to get information that's actually relevant to your life, things that you care about. 
And that's what you got to key in on. That's what you need to listen to. Because, <clears throat> again, sometimes a lot of people don't tell you about, you know, things that you actually need to know. So when you have that friend who is looking into things that are further, that is good. That is awesome. Because now you're you're getting extra education that actually was free. Just from a great conversation. And, again, they're going to help you, like, look at things into a, a, a different light. And they're kind of like the combatant. Like, you're not going to argue with them too much. They're gonna, you're going to have a general conversation. But sometimes in the conversations, you don't know exactly what they're talking about. And you can't fight it because you don't have the facts to go against it. But that's okay, though. Because one thing they're going to do for sure is they're going to correct you. And they're going to correct your language. They're going to correct, oh my God, can't talk. Correct your facts. They're going to make sure that you know what is true and what is false. Now, even though they what they're saying might be factual, note that it might be biased. So that's where you go back and you go fact checked what their facts are. Which again is good because in the real world, <clears throat> a lot of people aren't going to correct you. They're going to look at you like you're dumb. And you don't want to portray yourself as that type of individual who's, you know, not intelligent. So it's always good to have the smart one around because they're the ones who are going to basically critique you before the world critiques you. That is awesome. Next, you're going to have the funny one. <laughs> not to be goofy, but they're the ones who are, they create laughter. Like they're always joking and they're always going to make jokes. And like, you can't wait to get around them because you just know it's going to be a great time. Like, time flies when you're with them. And you, you're you so happy, but you're so sad when the time ends. Like, I got a brother, like, me and him, he'll come over for like four or five hours. We don't even know that it's been four or five hours. We don't know until it's like, oh, man, it's dark outside. That's crazy. It was it was bright, bright outside. It was super sun. You know what I mean? Like, the time just goes. And the thing is, like, me and him, we fly through topics. Like, we're talking we're communicating we're just really getting into it and you wouldn't expect you know the time to go as fast as it did but it does and that's because you're having a great time like you're really enjoying the conversation and honestly that's what makes those friends so amazing because like you just know it's going to be a great time like you're going to have a great vibe we're going to be in a great mood and those friends are hard to come by sometimes. Like, everyone needs that funny friend because everyone should. I'm not going to say everyone does, but they, everyone should enjoy a laugh. Like, how could you not? Like, who doesn't just like feeling a great, a good feeling? You just, <laughs> just for a great amount of time period. Like, to me, that's like nature's drug. Like, nature's positive drug. Like, you don't, it, it costs you nothing unless you're going to a stand-up show. But, again, we're talking about friends that chat, you should have them around. <laughs> again, it costs you nothing unless you go to Starbucks. I'm not endorsing them. I don't even drink there. But <laughs> it honestly is something that you can't get back. Because, like, the laughs, you can always get the laughs. But sometimes you can't get that laugh back. Like, I remember a time that me and my friends were at this hibachi place or whatever. And it was for my birthday. And it was five of us there. But... Three of us really was having a good time. And me and the other two, we had the laugh of our lives that day. Like, we probably could never have that laugh again. But the fact that I had those type of friends with me to have that laugh, where we were literally dying and trying to eat our food for 30 minutes or 45 minutes, we just, every, every few seconds, we had a new joke from the initial joke. I can't tell you what the jokes was, but... Yeah, like we had a new joke for the initial joke, and it, it just kept on going. And again, you don't realize how much time has went by, but you're glad that they're a part of it. This is why you need the funny ones. Next, you got the tut. T-U-T. What is tut? That is your turn-up twin. You know that it's going to be amazing once I get together. And the thing is, it's going to vary upon the culture, you know? You might have a group who gets a bunch of white claws and they meet up on you know a saturday in a home it can be a bunch of them they're enjoying their time they got the claws they got the music and they're just dancing right you might have a group who's blocking the street with a car and everybody is dancing on the car or in the street super loud that's how they turn up they're 
just noisy, you know? But they like to be a little, you know, a little out there. They want to, you know, express themselves. It, it's kind of funny. You also might have a group that gets together in a nice environment. And they're dancing around. They're spinning around. They're on that communion wine talking about, thank you, Lord. Oh, my goodness. You know, like, they're enjoying themselves. But you know, like, once you get with them, no matter what the actual occasion is, it's going to be amazing. You guys are going to, like, turn up. It's just it's just a vibe. Now, the thing is, <clears throat> you know it's going to be memorable. You know it's going to be a blast. You know it's going to be all these great things. But sometimes you might get in a little bit of trouble. You want to avoid the trouble part. <laughs> and sometimes you turn up, you turn up twin or twins, triplets, whatever you want to call them. Like, sometimes you're getting in trouble because y'all get the, y'all get so in-depth in the, the situation that it's so fun that it's like, now it's kind of hard to dig yourself out of a, you know, a, a, a problem. Like, y'all seen, if you haven't seen The Hangover, it's a great example. Like, you're with your great friends, you're with them, you're enjoying your time, and a whole lot of things go wrong. But you didn't expect that, but you kind of expected that for the simple fact is, you know who your turn-up crew is. Now... You got to keep it under control. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. You ain't got to be super crazy. But, yeah. The thing is, your turn up twins, you use them like salt. They ta It tastes good. It's great. But too much might just kill you. It might put you in the wrong predicament situation that you wasn't planning for. You use the turn up twins to season your life. Maybe you work a common nine to five and you work maybe five, six days during the week. <clears throat> but that one time you add that good little sauce. Mm -mm. Mwibian. That's your turn up. They, they're sparingly. They come around maybe once a month. But when you know they come around, it's going to be something amazing. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be memorable. You're probably going to have like the time of your life. And that is something that we all honestly need. Even if we just sit in the house. But when they come around, y'all might just be on the front porch. But it's going to be, a, it's going to be memorable because that's how you guys interact. And then finally, finally, the one that matters this is the one that's going to encompass all of the traits that we talked about can you guess they're the best friends yeah i think we all need one it doesn't matter if they're family doesn't matter if they're not really it's just either your blood or not blood so family or friends but we all need a best friend we all need the person that encompasses all the traits that the ones I just mentioned, or have been previously mentioned before. And I always get asked about how many best friends I have. And to answer that question so everyone knows, it is none of your business. <laughs> if they're my best friend and we call each other best friends, then that's what it is. Leave it at that. Don't bother. Don't make a messy situation. It's not your problem. Thank you. Thank you. Now, again, they're the ones who's going to have everything you need. They're going to accompany, oh my gosh, they're going to accompany all of these traits. And they're so dependable. Now, the thing is, <clears throat> like, they're not going to be the ones who always come around. They're going to be the ones who always, you know, answer the call. Because, again, we are, you know, older now. We have things to do. But, you know, they're going to always be around. They're going to be there when you need them. Not always when you want them. Because sometimes y'all be just wanting somebody just to sit and watch TikTok videos with you all day. Nobody's going to do that all day. No. And I got friends who are literally sit for two or three hours talking about, oh, and now it starts, and I'm scrolling. Literally, I'm the best friend who's not going to do that. If you're going to watch TikTok, we're going to go walk for uh, four miles. Like, we're going to go do something productive. Like, I can't just sit uh, for X amount of hours doing nada. Nope, it's not happening. But the best friend is dependable. They're the ones that are so well-rounded that, I, it, honestly, you, you don't need anything. Like, they're, they're put on this hierarchy. Like, and that's... It's not an issue, but that's something you got to pay attention to. Because, like, when you put you title somebody your best friend and you treat them like one, that means they are above the rest. Honestly. Probably not above family, but sometimes you treat your best friend like family. And they need to acknowledge that where their stature is. They need to act upon it. Like, some of my best friends got kicked because, you know, they didn't act like a best friend anymore. Like, don't treat me the same way you would treat a stranger. Or don't treat me... In a sense, uh, let's just give you an example. Like, if we're really best friends and we've been, like, that way for years, like, don't get rid of me when you get a significant other and then come back, you know, after y'all broke up 
and then repeat the process. So guess what? I don't know you anymore. You're not the same person. Like we aren't who we thought we were. And the thing is too, that you don't want to forget is that y'all can be best friends, but y'all don't have to speak every day. And that's something people get uh, confused. They're like, oh, my best friend has to text me all day, every day, Monday through Sunday, 24 hours. No, your best friend has a life. You should get a life too. I'm pretty sure you got one if you're able to communicate with them. So don't dwell upon, you know, not being able to speak to them every day. It's not going to happen, not in this day and age. And if it is happening, then guess what? Both of y'all or all of y'all need something to do because there's nothing, there's something not right in that, that season right there. But the best friends, they're going to be the ones that's dependable. But one thing that you want to remember about all that we mentioned, they need to be loyal and they need to be trustworthy. And if you can't have, if you got to question any of those things within any of those titles that we talked about, then guess what? Then they're not your friends. So to recap, you got the combatant, you got Einstein, you got the funny one, you got Tut, and you got your best friend. And we're going to leave it at that. <laughs>